Now that we understand how to create charts and graphs for both qualitative and quantitative data, let's take a look at how we might analyze those graphs. The first thing that you should look at in a graph is does it have everything that tells the full picture? So here is a very sparse bar graph. So I can tell that this is qualitative data. I'm looking at India, China, the US, and the UK. I have no idea what incidents we're looking at. I don't know where the information came from, so there's no source. Um, we have a title, but the title doesn't necessarily tell me what's going on. Number of incidents. So what kind of incidents are we looking at? Um, looking at this, I don't have an access label or an access title here or here. Also, yes, I've got some numbers here, but I don't know, is it actually just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 incidents? Or does each bar represent 10 incidents or 100 incidents? So is it 0, 100, 200? So again, always be looking at things that are included and maybe things that aren't included. I should be able to look at a graph and understand exactly what's being shown to me. And if you can't, there is something missing. So be skeptical. Also think about the appropriateness of a graph. So there are some different graphs that um, are out there that we didn't talk about, like a time series graph, a cross-sectional graph that is only at a certain point of time, um, and a pictograph. Now pictographs you don't really see unless you know, you're in elementary school. But a pictograph um, is basically like a bar graph that uses pictures instead of objects. But this in particular pictograph is very misleading, and here's why. If you'll notice on the key, I have different shapes representing different things. So one orange means six oranges, but one apple means four apples. So um, one thing that you want to look out for is something called the area principle. And typically on the area principle, it's talking about, say, someone making a bar graph and one bar is very skinny and the next bar is very fat. And so even though this might be, say, the difference between three and five of whatever it is that I'm, you know, graphing, this area is so much bigger and makes it look like whatever this is that I'm graphing um, had a lot more going on than this tiny little skinny guy. But again, this is sort of another application of the area principle because each picture represents a different number of each type of fruit. And this one's kind of funny, half of a fruit just equals one fruit. So even though an orange is six oranges, this half of an orange isn't three oranges, it's just one. So again, things are violated all over the place in this case. Something else that you should look for is the scaling of the graph. Not only should you make sure that the scaling is appropriate for what is being shown, um, also if you're comparing two data sets, as I have here, which is heights and centimeters of US women versus European women, notice that their scales are not the same. So even though their scales on the horizontal axis appear to be scaled the same, on the European women, we're going by fives and with a max of 20. And on the US, we're going by twos with a max of 16. So when you're comparing two different data sets, the scale needs to be the same. In addition, if you even if you just have one data set, keep in mind that by shrinking or stretching a scale, it's going to make the bars greater or less than. Um, so it might change the way something looks. In addition, if you have a scale that has a break in the graph, so if I am down here at zero and then I come all the way up here to 1000 and then 1100, and you get the idea that there's a lot of data that was skipped over here in the middle. So just always pay attention to the scale. The last thing we want to talk about is the shape of a graph. And the shape of a graph just gives you an understanding of the overall distribution. So 
if you have a uniform graph, it's typically the same. And again, notice this is not exactly the same, but there is a general straightness to the shape of the graph. So most of the bars are roughly the same height. That's a uniform distribution. A symmetric distribution is one where, again, in general, I should be able to draw a line down the middle and fold it in half and have it more or less fit. The other two are a graph that is skewed. So quite often we have graphs that are skewed and a lot of students struggle with this because a lot of students want to call this skewed left and this skewed right. But just keep in mind that the skew is always in the direction of the tail. So notice on this graph, most of my data is here and then I've got a tail here with something called an outlier. And an outlier is something that doesn't quite fit with the rest of the data. But as you can see, I've got a tail on the right, and that is called skewed right. On this distribution, I've got a tail on the left, and again, that is why we call that a skewed left distribution, because the tail is on the left side. Congrats, you are done with chapter two. Up next, we're going to start chapter three and take a look at measures of center.